Hello, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Pet McDonald, and in this video, we'll be learning the one to five player game, The Game, designed by Stefan Bendorf and published by IDW Games. Prepare to test your planning and problem solving skills in this cooperative challenge, where you'll be forced to coordinate your plays with your partners in order to survive. So, come join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, first place out these four row cards in the center of the table, which you can identify by the large arrows in the middle. Shuffle the rest of the cards into a face down deck, which you'll place nearby, and deal from it a number of cards to each player based on the number of players. Six cards in a three to five player game, seven for a two player game, and eight if you're playing solo. Here we've set up for a two player game, and that's the setup. The object of the game is to collectively play all the cards from the deck and your hands onto the table. Once you can no longer play cards, the game ends and you count up the number of cards remaining to find your score. The lower the better. If you manage to play all 98 cards, you've won the game. The game itself is played over a series of turns. When playing with multiple players, all of them have a chance to look at their own hands before deciding who will go first. Play then continues in a clockwise fashion from the start player. However, players are not allowed to show or indicate the value of the cards in their hand during the game. Though players can make vague comments such as, I think I have a good hand for going first, or don't play anything on that pile. On your turn, you must play at least two cards onto any of the piles that will be created beside each row card. These two are known as ascending piles. Cards placed here must always increase in value as they are played. If you place a card into one of the descending piles, it must be a lower value than whatever is currently on top. For example, if I wish to place this 10 here to start the ascending pile, I can. But now I can't place a 5 here as it would not be higher. I might instead place it here. I could also place it onto either of the descending piles, but that would really limit my future plays there. Cards added to a pile are always placed on top of older ones, causing the piles to grow and limiting your options more and more. However, there is a special rule to make your job a bit easier. If a card is exactly 10 higher or lower than a card already in play, you can play it on top of that card, even if this would otherwise break the regular ascending or descending order. For example, using this rule, I can play this 13 on top of the 23, even though I would normally have to place a higher value. Remember, you must play at least two cards on your turn, but you may play more if you wish. When placing, you can lay them all in the same pile or on multiple piles during the same turn. Once you've finished your turn, draw back up to your starting hand size, then the next player takes their turn. Remember, players are never allowed to communicate the exact values of the cards in their hand, but other forms of communication are allowed, such as advising players not to lay cards in a particular row or avoiding large jumps in another. If the draw pile becomes empty, players continue to play with the cards left in their hands, However, they now only have to play one card a turn, but may continue to play more if they wish. If a player runs out of cards in their hand, the other players continue to play without them, though they will still share in the victory or defeat at the end of the game. As soon as any player is unable to play the minimum number of cards required on a turn, the game ends immediately, whether the draw pile has been emptied or not. You then count the remaining number of cards left in the draw pile, as well as any cards in the player's hands, to find the final score. The lower the score, the better. Anything less than 10 is an excellent result, and if you manage to play all 98 cards, you win the game, and you should try increasing your challenge for the next game. Start by making the minimum number of cards played each turn 3 instead of 2, and if that isn't enough, try dealing one less card to each player during your next game. And that's everything you need to know to play the game. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments section below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until next time, thanks for watching.